So after this beautiful, rich sharing opportunity, just coming back to the body, back to this moment, noticing however it feels inside right now. Grounding yourself by noticing your buttocks or your legs, maybe your feet on the ground. Really taking your seat, allowing gravity to relax the body, tensions to melt away into the ground. And noticing any feelings in the top of the head. And allowing all the tension from the head through the face, the brow, temples, jaw, down through the shoulders. the hands, imagining all those tensions just flowing down, down into the seat and into the ground. And just spreading your awareness once again from the top of the head to the tips of the toes as though your awareness were like the light and warmth of the sun shining upon your head and permeating, penetrating through every cell. Relaxing and loosening up any remaining tensions or tightness and imbuing the body with the warmth of kindness and care. Noticing every little part of the body between the elbows, the place between the fingers, the fingertips, the armpits, the ribs, all those places that were often left out or ignored, allowing the whole body to be sensed and cared for. Relaxing in the golden light of the sun.
with every out breath relaxing a little more deeply. Becoming a little more at ease and at peace. And noticing any sensations that arise connected with kindfulness, maybe tingling sensations, maybe feelings of softness or warmth. Or just neutral feelings. such as on the palms of the hands or the soles of the feet. There are usually not many disagreeable sensations there. And allowing your mind to rest with whatever feels easeful for you right now. If it feels good to you, maybe allowing awareness to hover around the area of the chest, the heart area, where the feelings of loving kindness often arise or are sensed. And imagine this little flame in the heart a little flame of loving kindness, of warmth. And invite a friend, a dear person, maybe even a parent or a child, a teacher. Invite them to share that warmth as though they were sitting in front of your heart and that little flame were ignited in theirs. And they too start to relax with the warmth of loving kindness now shared. Imagine this person soaking up your loving kindness and that loving kindness healing any hurt, any disease they may have. Letting them know that they're safe, that they're loved. that you respect them and really deeply care. And you notice this flame growing bigger in your heart and also in theirs. As the warmth starts to spread from the two of you right into this room or the virtual Zoom room, which is being shared right now. and lighting up a little flame in everybody's heart. A flame that is soft and warm. A 
and in turn gives that warmth and care to everyone sitting around us. May all beings who we've been practicing with, all of us here in Sheffield and all of the people here with us through Zoom, maybe not physically, but emotionally, spiritually, energetically here, supporting all of us and supporting one another spreading that loving kindness around the world. Here in Sheffield, so many little candles have already been lighted in our hearts and they start spreading out, out of this building, warming up all the people in the streets, in the homes, maybe nursing homes, hospitals, to the taxi drivers busy tonight. Imagine little flames of loving kindness sparking to life in everyone's heart. And all of our friends on Zoom seated in different places around the world, some in America, some in Italy, in Germany, in Belgium, all across Europe and throughout the UK. Imagine us all sitting in our various places throughout the world and those little flames growing bigger, giving light and warmth to the people in our neighborhoods, in our cities and towns. Lighting up the beautiful flames of good intentions to take forth into the next year. Encouraging people to let go of the grudges, the hurt, the resentment and the pain. To release themselves from the pain of the past. To release others from the prisons of our expectations. May these flames of loving kindness ignite in the hearts of all beings. So each light starts spreading to connect with the next. Bringing a beautiful golden glow of brightness across the world. spreading to countries where there are wars or famine, to the refugee camps, the prisons, the hospitals, and any other place where beings 
feel frightened, feel constrained. May all beings receive our loving kindness and sense a glimmer of hope, a glimmer of light in their hearts. May we share whatever peace, whatever blessings we have in our life with all beings everywhere. Beings who are suffering. Beings who are fortunate and at ease. Any one of us could be in the other's shoes at any time. So may all beings be happy, be safe. May all beings know true loving kindness, true peace. And this loving kindness is shared not only with human beings, but also with animals. Maybe your own pets, if you have them, or any animals, even those we consider pests. Insects, worms, birds, bees. large, mighty animals like elephants and tigers. Small little animals like mice, guinea pigs, and kangaroos, <laughs> even snakes, may all beings who desire happiness and recoil from pain, may they all be happy and well. May they all be safe. All birds and other beings in the sky, all fish, whales, octopus and other creatures in the sea, in the rivers and lakes. May all beings everywhere, wherever beings breathe, may they all receive our loving kindness. Be safe and be at ease. And the loving kindness grows so strong it goes beyond the bounds, the categories of beings, and just spreads outwards and unbounded in the four directions. In front of where we're seated right now, as far as it will, to the right, all beings in that direction. Behind where we're seated right now, may our loving kindness permeate outward and spread without bounds. And to the left, allowing the matter just to keep flowing.
above and also below. Spreading so far it connects with the metta of all beings who are seated together across the globe. Creating this huge web of loving kindness that encompasses all. Just allowing the mind to expand with this feeling of safety, warmth, goodwill. And resting here for a while, no effort. Just enjoying the peace. And now gently and kindly bringing your mind back into this room, into your body and your heart, noticing that little flame in your heart, maybe a feeling of warmth or an imaginary flame. And just notice how it feels right now in your own heart. And imagine offering this little flame or maybe a large flame of loving kindness to whoever you're about to meet. Could be your fellow retreatants if you're here. Could be the families that you'll be going home to or maybe the neighbor's cat. Maybe you're simply staying alone in the presence of your own loving kindness this evening. Or calling a friend, whatever it is. Imagine meeting yourself or the people you're about to encounter and your loving kindness spreading to them. Giving them a feeling of safety, a feeling of care and well-being.
So just staying with that feeling in your heart, staying embodied and allowing the final blessing to wash over you with wishes of loving kindness to oneself and to all beings everywhere. Sape sata Sape pana Sape buta Sape pugala Sabe ata bawa pariapana Saba etio Sabe purisa Sabe avia Sabe anavia Sabe Deva Sabe Manusa Sabe Winipadika Aweva Hontu Abya Paja Hontu Ani gahon tu Sikiatanam bavi havan tu Dukam unjan tu Yadalada sampatito Maui kachan tu Kama Saka Now tradition is to say three big sadhus, so I know the people on Zoom are very good at that. And some of you in here have had a bit of practice too. So <laughs> let's say sadhu. Sadu, sadu. <laughs> Very good. And the ha 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 is not optional. <laughs> it's part of the final. Yay! So thank you so much to everybody. And I know the um, the Sheffield Insight team are going to say a few words, but before they do, and so that I don't. Uh, miss the chance. I want to really say a massive thank you to all the organizers of this retreat, who I'm hopefully looking at, most of you. <laughs> and uh, also to Matthias and Darren, who helped a lot with uh, little technical things. But yeah, it's been just wonderful to be back here and teaching right next to my hometown, which is kind of unusual for me because I've spent most of my practice life in Asia, in India, Burma, and then later in Australia, which is even further away. And to come back here is always really heartwarming. And uh, I was actually hot in that meditation when we talked about the flame. I had to take my hat off because <laughs> it was quite hot. But I won't say the name of this person, but they know who they are, who hosted me so beautifully here. It was really very touching. And um, because of that, I had really nice rest. Even when I didn't sleep that well, mm -hmm. I still had a really nice rest and felt so at ease and so welcome. And um, it was just lovely. And also the nourishing food and all the care that went into that. Everyone here who helped me with cups of tea. That was also really much appreciated, even if I didn't need a cup of tea at that time. But just the fact that you asked was really, really sweet. And um, I really hope that uh, yeah, you're able to continue serving and bringing teachers here and doing your Dhamma service, basically, that benefits so many people. So, yeah, thank you to Sheffield Insight. And uh, I'll let Catherine say a few words about Dana. 
because uh, it's much better that she says something. And there'll be something in the chat for the Zoom people too. Do you want to be on the video somehow? Not particularly. <laughs> but maybe you need a mic. It'll add your voice. Yeah. <laughs> recording start. Oh. Recording start? Yeah, you don't need to record it, do you? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Recording in progress. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, it's the end of the retreat and almost the end of uh, 2022. So we've made it almost to the end of, of both. Um, so I hope everyone's enjoyed it, both online and in person. And it's, it's actually been really lovely to mix mix the two and have sort of yeah this sort of mixture of community um and thank you to venerable chanda for well such richness and depth and um and cheerfulness <laughs> cheerfulness of the teaching which is always uh, nice so i think i think i feel a bit more um hospitable towards 2023 having been on the retreat which is a good thing so um yeah i hope everyone feels feels nourished and that they've enjoyed it um I'll say a little bit um, about Dana. I think Venerable Chanda's explained, um, sort of leads the uh, Anya Kampa Bikuni project and they have a base in Oxford, um, you know, a project for spreading the Dharma and also a base for the full ordination of women um, in this country. Um, so in appreciation for the, the teachings that have been given and, and to support that project, um, you can, of course, offer financial dana, um, and we can do that outside, you can do that online. But there's other ways that you can support the project as well. Um, the base in Oxford is, is open for guests. Um, Small, but we can take from guests. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's ways to support that, even if you don't live in Oxford. You don't, it doesn't need to be in person, but if you go onto the, the website and there's leaflets outside, um, you know, offerings of food and other sorts of service um, can be offered to help that project move forward. Let the Dharma unfold and open up in different ways. Um, yeah, and if we can um, continue to uh, do what we do, <laughs> and if there are a lot of people wanting to stay as guests, then uh, we are hoping to uh, reach the goal of a full-fledged monastery in this country somewhere beautiful um i mean the north is not out of the question but at the moment we've got our eyes sort of on stroud because it's quite easy to access from london um and yeah there's a direct train and it's not too far south so it's you know sometimes things all happen in the south and then nobody up here gets much of a chance um but this is the first place in the whole country even the oxford place for fully ordained women and where people can come and stay and obviously there are other monasteries but um nothing just for women and men can come too and uh non-binary people transgender people it's just a matter of space so you know the more we can uh do the more we can offer uh to all kinds of people so everybody's very welcome and uh hopefully one day it will be full of of Dhamma practitioners and even we can hold retreats maybe something. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, a couple of um, points about Sheffield Insight. Um, if you're interested in hearing about our events, you can join our mailing list. That can all be done from our website. Likewise, if you'd like to become a supporter, which um, doesn't cost anything, but enables you to support the organisation and potentially vote and become a trustee. Um, and I think Julian spoke this morning. Um, any sort of services is warmly welcomed, um, you know, big or small, whether it's thinking about being a trustee or helping out with retreats, please do contact us. Um, you can either speak to us afterwards or, or get in touch through the website or our emails. Um, we have a sitting group every four weeks on a Tuesday. The next one is Tuesday the 10th of January 
at half past six and that's down at Netheredge um, near St Andrew's Church it's actually in, in Shirley House. Um, details will be, be on the website. That's for just over an hour from 6.30 onwards. Um, we will be sending out a feedback form by email over the next couple of days. Um, all the questions are optional, so it's literally, you know, whatever you want to say, you don't have to wade your way through lots of detail, but it's really helpful for us to hear from you about how you found things. Any aspects, um, all feedback is very warmly welcomed. Um, and I'd just like to end with, um, well, saying thank you again to, to Sheffield Insight, um, the trustees, organising team, particularly Julian, who's borne the <laughs> heavy load of, of tech. Um, and we've had so many people online, it's been fantastic. Mary Ann and other organisers who aren't here. Um, also to Chrissy, Shad, who's gone, um, who really helped with the building. Um, and to the Quaker Meeting House for um, letting us hire this place sort of on our own with, with their help over New Year. Um, all of you for coming and helping in different ways as well. And um, yeah, a final. Julian. Have I mentioned Andrew, who's been also oh, yes. remotely? Yes, yeah, sorry, Andrew, I hadn't seen you, so, but <laughs> thank you very much. So. And Mary Ann has got. Oh, thank you. So, and um, yeah, finally, thank you again to Venerable Chanda for coming up to the north. Oh, it's great. I thank love you. coming up. And I've seen my parents for the first time in the year tonight. Wow. So that's really nice as well. And I also, because we thanked everyone, the organisers and myself, but we haven't thanked the participants. And actually, there wouldn't be a retreat without all of you and without your practice and your generosity in receiving the teachings. So it's always lovely to teach to people who are receptive and who are so kind with uh, what's offered because, you know, it's not so easy. And, uh, you know, you always wonder how are things going to land. But it, what I find so lovely in my role, both as a teacher and as a, a bhikkhuni, a monastic, is um, just how kind and generous and grateful people are. So I really appreciate it very much. And also the feedback from the Zoom room, it, it's really heartening. And, you know, it's a sign of your practice, basically. Um, and I really respect the sincerity of everybody's practice. So thank you for being here and supporting all of us, you know, and supporting each other in that way as well. So, yeah, just finally to say goodbye to the Zoom group because I'm I know I'm not there. Should I come and say goodbye? What? I don't have this. The camera. Oh, I can say goodbye like that. Am I looking at everyone? <laughs> but I can't see you. <laughs> they can see me, but yeah. I might come and have one more little glance and wave because that's the tradition.